This Christmas will be the first I've had while being in a long-term romantic relationship. And my girlfriend for sure expects me to get her something nice. The problem is I'm a minimalist in my lifestyle and as such have a really terrible, terrible time picking out things to give people. I'm just as bad at selecting gifts all around. It occurred to me, however, that my girlfriend and a close female friend of mine, who, full disclosure, I previously had a pseudo-romantic relationship with, have similar taste in fashion accessories and stuff, and that if I got her to help me pick something out, it would for sure be a hit with my girlfriend. I just can't decide if this idea is brilliant and practical solution to my gift-giving woes or the worst idea ever. That's from Gift Blind Guy in Minneapolis. Oh, hey. it's the worst idea ever. Hey, well, Gift Blind Guy, if you want to get back together with the first girl you dated, just do it, okay? <laughs> Please I, don't make me watch you at JCPenney as you go through the scarves, okay? Thank you. Um, I mean, it depends entirely on what the relationship is between the two women. Because if, if, if your girlfriend is not comfortable with you hanging out this former beau of yours then I don't think she would be cool with like, oh, these are so great slacks. I love these slacks. Where'd you get these slacks? And you say, JCPenney. And you say, how much do they cost? And you say, well, don't ask me a question about that. Like that is a gift. And you say, oh, well, how did you know how I would like these slacks? And then you say, oh, oh. Large Marge told me. <laughs> Why did I, I am so fucking bad at thinking of names whenever I tell anecdotes. <laughs> well, let's roll with Large Marge. So your friend Large Marge helps you to pick this out. If she, if if current, current special someone does not know about your relationship small with Large Marge. Marge. Small, so if small Marge, Marge, if new Marge doesn't know about Large Marge, then you are fine. Here are some key notes. I don't care what the relationship is. No one wants to hear that they needed someone of the opposite sex mm -hmm. to help them pick a gift because they, they know you that little. Like, that's not, that's going to sully the present. They must never know. Okay, that's number one. No reason. No reason. I don't think there's any reason to be bad at buying people gifts. Because that just means that you don't well, know what they like. Like, Yeah, this is the problem, is that when you say that she wants something nice and you're minimalist and blah, 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 you're missing the point. The point is not how expensive or you know how big or how great the present is. It's that when... when the, my, my feelings on gift giving is that when the person opens the present and sees it for the first time, they should know instantly why you thought they would like it. Right. You know, whether they actually do or not, they should be able to think, okay, well, he knows that I like this movie, and this is a piece of memorabilia from that. Or See, he knows that my favorite color is blue, and so he bought me this blue shirt. I come at it more from a shock and awe angle, where like, holy shit, I can't believe this person spent this much money on me. I'm just saying your advice makes you really sound like one of the 47%, but go on. <laughs> It oh, sounds like poor people advice. You're poor mouthing right now. What well, do you? Okay, so uh, gift blind. Do you want me to solve this for you? Do it. And it's a it's a little tweak, but just don't have the person go with you. Ask them beforehand. Ask Large Marge. Say, hey, what? I'm trying to think of things to get my girlfriend this Christmas. Do you have any suggestions? And then you don't have to say that someone helped you pick it out. Well, except that she say, did. No. I do that all the time. If like, and I never, you know, go on that solely, but I'll pull some friends and say, I'm thinking about getting Teresa this. What do you think? You know what I mean? Like, I, I there's, there's no shame in asking the audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you don't have to go in it alone, but maybe don't make the person such an intrinsic part of picking out the gift that you've got to give them credit for it. How about this? Let's buy her some lotion, you goofster. Is a surefire hit. What flavor? So, you know, fucking pecans or vanilla or something food. Like some sort of dessert <laughs> flavor. Or just get her some food. See, that's classic. That's how Large Marge thought. Large Marge wanted everything to smell like food. So, of course, she's going to get you, like, barbecue sauce lotion. Mm -hmm. which, but mm -hmm. you, th that's not what New Marge likes. New Marge likes baubles. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe get her a day at the spa. I bet, who wouldn't like that? Maybe get her some bath salts. Actual bath salts or the drug. Yeah, have just you, get her the drug. Have you guys noticed, and I don't know if it is, the, is this way at your personal malls, have you noticed that the, uh, like after November 1, 
the Bath and Body Works is just untenable. Yeah. You cannot enter that. It is a throng of humanity. It is it is Black Friday in that in that particular kiosk all all month long. Yeah. And the smell the smell manifests into a very physical presence. It's it's mm-hmm. a it's a visible smell coming it's out like, of that place. You will it's see like, like a smell ghost like wafting out of the front door saying mm-hmm. come in. It's like somebody baked all of the different cookies that there are in the world and then covered them in rose petals and then buried them in the ground for 2,000 years and then dug that up it, and then injected like it straight in your nostrils. When the, when the like whiff of smell comes out and like entices the hobo to like come to the pie in the window. Yeah. It's like that only with uh, sons and husbands who don't know what their wives or moms like. Yeah, going into Bath and Body Works to get a gift for your significant other is basically just like giving up. Just like, I don't know, I guess they like to smell good and be soft. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Smell beautiful for me, Deborah. I mean, it is also like the quintessential, like, you know, white elephant, you know, secret Santa present of like, I know nothing about this person except that they don't like to stink. I, like... <laughs> I just don't like the idea of getting somebody a gift that basically says, I want you to smell better for like two weeks, and then this is going to be gone. Enjoy this for two, for less well, than a can month. We, can we also say that there's something skeezy about saying, I got you a gift, and I want you to rub it all over your body. Well, <laughs> Rub this on your body. I've gotten, I think oh. me. I've gotten several grandmothers lotion from Bath and Body Works, <laughs> and that, cross, that thought didn't really cross my mind. It oh, was this, more like... This is, just, this is just twisted peppermint. Wow. Rub it all over your body. No, it was more like <laughs> this. Grim- is the way I got in the v- vanilla vanilla bean Noel. Take this in a vanilla bean Noel. <laughs> rub it all over your ashy elbows. Mine, mine was more like oh meeps, oh meeps meeps. <laughs> I know that your hands get all crackly when you play in computer pachinko. <laughs> so why don't you rub this sweet sweet peppermint all over? Them? I'll take care of that crackly problem. You can play pachinko uninterrupted. It's- it's very, it's very, very dry in your assisted living housing. Mm. Maybe put some <laughs> pink sugar plum onto those crackled knuckles. Oh, meepers, it's dry, dry work writing in all caps on my Facebook wall. <laughs> you know you gotta lube them up. Lube those Loop those joints up so you can keep clicking. So I guess I'm just curious as to how the your... jazz musician made his way into our conversation about lotion. <laughs> jazz hey. musician has a grandma too. <laughs> hey, I'm oh, jazz granny. I'm Lou Reed, and I'm gonna rub stuff all over all your grandmas. I'm gonna put a little, <laughs> we're gonna put a little soul in a bowl. Mm-hmm. We're gonna rub a, rub stuff all. Wait, wait. Did you say Lou Reed or Lou Ross? <laughs> I said both of them. <laughs> both of them have grandmothers, after all. We all have grannies, Lou don't we, folks? Ross gonna tag team your grandma's <laughs> elbows. I used to like this show, my brother, my brother, me, and then every episode devolved into them low talking and trying to in a, say the most upsetting things they could think of to each other. <laughs> Vanilla Grand- Bean Noel, folks, that's the scent to watch, mm. in my opinion. <laughs> I'm keeping track of all the scent stock markets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have invested heavily in pink sugar plum. Uh, Yankee Candle has got it popping off. They've got some. Go uh, on. Apple and pine needle is, Ooh, is one. That smells great. That sounds delightful. So I've dropped about ten large on uh, on one that's just called buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> they some, uh, some people just can't get enough of that that funky stuff. <laughs> this isn't funky and oh 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 funky is a terrible word i uh there is a there there are now at uh yankee candle they now have scents for men and like like pumpkin pie is not a scent for like they're all scents for men no i'm talking about shit there is a there is a smell like for example of fresh pussy Like the smell of freshly cut wood, the smell of carpentry, basically, is a, is a smell you can That's get at Yankee Candle. I yeah. want to know how you play that off to your bros when they're like, "Hey, bro, have you been Are cutting you building s- a cabinet? Are you building something with your own hands?" Like, well, almost. I lit a candle that smelled like I did. Are we good? Am I good right now? 
I am I also, good? I, I, I'm sorry, Yankee Candle. I usually like you, but I do not live in a world in which I light a pumpkin spice candle and some bros walk in the room and say, oh, are you burning a candle like a lady? Or like, I've never heard that before. You light a cut wood candle and your girlfriend comes home and is like, what the fuck is this shit? I hate this smell. <laughs> oh, it's like poison. There is an actual no bullshit Yankee candle that is called, and I kid you not, Mantown. <laughs> that is a candle. You could go to Yankee Candle and say, I tell you where I want this scent to transport me to. Mantown. Which is also the follow up hit to the Weather Girls It's Rated Men. Mm -hmm. About this fragrance, escape to the man cave with oh, this God. masculine blend of spices, woods, and musk. Oh my uh, god. Is there a word worse than musk? That's the, been the problem with men exclusive rooms all these years is that they haven't smelled enough like dudes. Nope. Wait a minute. I got that completely backwards. <laughs> no what? one ever walks into your quote unquote man cave. First off, gross. Yeah. Second, no one ever walks into your man cave and says, Man, I tell you what it can smell more like in here right now. <laughs> Dude! Or better yet, I, I fucking love this smell, but it's so hard to get bros together, drink beer, <laughs> eat corn nuts, and watch football all the time. Just I wish I could wake up to this scent. Mm. <laughs> I just wish that there was some way that I could just take myself to man town. Mm -hmm. I, tell you, I, I tell you, Philippe, it really, really smells like uh, you've had a bunch of dudes in here hanging out and broing. Yeah, it smells like that, doesn't it? It's pretty much just been me, me and my candles. We had a pretty heavy <laughs> bro sesh last week, and the musk is still hanging in the. It's in the wallpaper. That stank ain't never coming out. Well, now it won't because I just don't know what. Uh, if you light what a market? candle, what market? Yeah, what's the market? If I light a candle, the use is almost always to get rid of a smell that a man created. Oh. Like, it is almost always nope. from like, ah, Greg, you left your fish out again. Guys, I know what the market is. Tell me. Army wives. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. How could this be? How could this happen? 130 episodes without picking on America's most most deserving demographic, army wives. They've had it easy for too long. Here comes my brother, my brother, me to knock that proverbial. Clomp, clomp, clomp. clomp. We're gonna bully you. <laughs> Here we are. Can we end Army the show? Wives. I feel terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's the end. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's the end of the show. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't really know if we've really given it to Army Wives enough. But <laughs> I think we even we cracked open the door and it was enough. They're getting. Listen, listen, Army Wives, you're on notice. <laughs> you're, you're getting, we don't have any good goose for you this week, but next week, oh boy, you're getting off you easy. Easy right now, but you're finally gonna get yours next week. You'll get your comeuppance.